Welcome back to the Culture of Currency, where today we get to talk about the beautiful silver series that we find here in Australia. Uh, we are starting our series. We're going through different areas of the world and highlighting cool coins and cool series from them so that you know what's out there and you know what it is you should target for your investment money. Remember that everything you see here was built at $100 a month. Uh, so know that every single thing you see on this channel, you can do too. There's nothing stopping you. Up first, right here, we have a really cool coin from Australia. All, obviously, you see here, we have the 1952 to 2022, so you won't see her anymore. Uh, you'll see Charles, but this is the Brumby. Just picked this guy up. Uh, this is one of the really cool series out of the Perth Mint. You can see the small P right here. And what we have is a design of a wild horse, or as they call it, the Brumby. The American equivalent would be the Mustang. Every year, the artwork changes and it is fairly low mintage. And so this is a series that definitely should be considered uh, if you are somebody who collects probably more than stacks because these do have a little bit of a premium on them uh, but they're also beautiful and collector's items so this is the brumby which is a beautiful and fantastic coin from the perth mint like we said uh, and is something that i think is worth considering in fact if you only could collect coins collect silver bullion from one area of the world uh, this would probably be the one that you would want to go. America, pretty boring. Canada's not bad. Um, but the Australia, uh, the, between the Australian, Royal Australian Mint and Perth Mint, you are really set when it comes to beautiful themes, excellent quality, uh, and really just interest overall. Up next, we have a set of three right here. And that is indicative that I really like the series because I've used my $100 a month to purchase multiple of these rather than just one. My whole collection is one of ones, by the way. So even if I have a stack of three, that means each individual coin is unique from the same series. So we see the queen there, 2021. This was the first in this series. This is a Royal Australian Mint product, the Australian Zoo Cheetah. I want to say these are around 20, 25,000 minted, somewhere in there, which is just a really good number because it means if you're paying attention, you have the ability to get one without too much of a premium. Uh, but a year out, you're probably not going to have a chance. So it does have that cool sweet spot. But this is highlighting animals from the Royal Australian Zoo. We have the cheetah right here. Then we move forward. This is the 2022 variety. And we have the Sumatran elephant. They have megafauna in the Sumatran area. Back when the uh, earth was different than it is today, we had different sea levels. And so megafauna like elephants, tigers, bears could travel across what is now an archipelago of islands making the indonesia area so new guinea sumatra borneo all of those types of places beautiful beautiful quality as you can see and to remind you i have videos over all of these coins that are highly in depth so if you see one you like and you want to know about it or maybe you have it in your collection and you want to know about it please go check those videos out royal australian mint so here is a 2022 variety. This is going to have the years of her reign, which is kind of like its own privy mark because it's the only year they're going to have that. And this year it was the southern white rhinoceros. And you see some what I believe to be oxpecker birds here. Beautiful foreground. Uh, just a fantastic and stunning rendition here of the southern white rhinoceros so those are three that i have in that series which shows you my love for that series uh, and in fact when it comes to mints of the world the one that i think that has gained the most ground over the past couple of years would be the royal australian mint we all know the perth mint was fantastic so it can't really grow much from there but with the last three or five, three to five years i'd say the things that were coming out of the Royal Australian Mint have just blown me away. Excellent quality. Here we are. Next, 
you see this rim here, which tells you it's uh, the last generation. Almost all of the coins kind of had that vibe to them back then. But this is a 2017 koala. It is my favorite koala ever. I got this from Atmex as a random BU koala, and they sent me one with a privy mark, little rooster up here. Two reasons why I love that one we just talked about with this little privy mark. The other is that the koala spins very, very little amounts of its life on the ground and so to have a coin that features the koala on the ground I find to be rare. There's not really any more that have ground dwelling koala on it and so I feel like I have uh, a pretty cool coin, a pretty rare version for that being said. Just gorgeous and then we have the newer generation here. As you can see we kind of have the rim but everything is frosted so it really changes the way the coin looks. We see that matte against a more uh, satin finish of Her Majesty there. And here we have the new generation koala here, uh, kind of just doing koala things, hanging out on a branch, kind of uh, envious of that currently. Beautiful way we incorporate the text, and we have a couple more examples of this new generation that we'll get to, but those are both koala coins. Every, everybody loves this series. Um, not everybody, but most people love this series. It is one of the most popular in Australia, and it actually does not have a giant mintage of, let's say, you know, 800,000. So it's one of those that you could get on and love to track every single year as the artwork changes. This is a series that is no longer there. Uh, it was a four-part series. It is a shipwreck series, and it obviously comes from Australia. This highlights for, I believe, uh, they're European boats, but I want to say they were Dutch, possibly. Dutch East India Trading Company ships, whenever they were exploring and doing that type of thing out in Australia, that shipwrecked in the founding of Australia from a colonial standpoint. But this being the Zwijik, it's the last of the series. It was given to me by Bullion Now when I did a interview with them over COVID. Uh, well, not over COVID. It was over silver, but, you know, during COVID, I should say. But this was given to me by them, and it is a fantastic coin. I've always wanted one. Uh, the triangular orientation is something that always drew my eye and the idea that it is upside down and right side up at the same time kind of really is interesting. The back looks like this. This is depictions of their voyage where they had to break down the ship after shipwreck and all that kind of stuff and survive out there in the wilderness. And if you know anything about Australia, that is not a fun place to try to survive. Everything uh, that wants to kill you lives there and they try it. Here's another coin that's Probably shouldn't actually be here, but I had no other place to put it. As you can see, it's the British Antarctic Territory. Uh, it's close to Australia, and it's minted by the Perth Mint. So I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I'll just stick it in here. So it's not technically Australian, but it is something uh, close enough, I would say. There's Mr. Or I shouldn't say Mr. His Majesty, Charles. Uh, and we have Emperor Penguins on the back. Two Emperor Penguins. And it is, I don't know if it's actually from a series or not, as I believe this was year one and I haven't seen a year two. It's one that I could see being a series, but I'm not positive on that. So I don't want to get your hopes up, but you can still find these. They are fairly low mintage. Cool little coin. And I picked it up because I had nothing from Antarctica. Uh, and I got to learn a lot about it making that video. Up next, we once again see the years of her reign, 52 to 2022. Uh, but this is going to be the Quokka. This is my first Quokka. Quokka, sorry. It is a Quokka, and I have said it wrong before. I should know better. Quokka, like guacamole, it's Quokka. But yes, this is a newer series, and it is highly, highly, highly popular. I had no idea. So I bought one this year, and by the time it arrived at my house, it was already overvalued uh, what I paid for it when tracking it online. So I think I bought mine for low 30s. And it was in the 40s last time I checked that it was selling for actively. That was the sold price. So these are highly valuable. They come at a low mintage. I want to say uh, maybe 30,000-ish. I cannot remember. I know it's in my Quokka video. 
beautiful design and it is highly, highly collectible. I was not prepared for that. So cool one to pick up if you didn't know it was out there. Next we have, once again, Years of Her Reign, which is kind of like a built-in privy mark. And this is the Rough Tooth Dolphin. This is going to be a marine mammal series that I've seen that is changing every year on the species that they're highlighting. It can be bottlenose, spinner dolphins, basically different types of porpoise uh, slash dolphins around that area. Uh, but yeah, beautiful coins. They do change artwork every year. They are a fairly low mintage variety and high, high quality. And I believe these are Perth Mint products, if I remember correctly. I don't see the little P on here, but this has the hallmark of Perth Mint. So I assume that's what it is. I know it's one of those two. Up next, we have some Lunars. I think from a art standpoint, this is probably the best out there right now. Uh, unless you're paying really, really high premiums for, let's say, some of the French products. But this is the Royal Australian Mints cycle. On the obverse, we have the entire 12 animal cycle, starting with the ox, then going, sorry, the rat, then ox, then tiger, then we have the rabbit, and then this year we're on the dragon. But this one right here is going to be the ox, which is gorgeous. What I love about their lunar cycle is it actually captures more than just the animal. As you can see, we have right here in the background water, which is going to be the river that the animal has to cross to get to the Jade Palace. We also have this crescent moon type structure because these are lunar animals. So I thought that this design was one of the most thoughtful I have seen, uh, and I put it up there with Bhutan with kind of how the importance is of the iconography. So really, really strong uh, coin there, one that I highly enjoy. Next, we have some older generation Lunars from the Perth Mint, ones that I cannot stand, but they are incredibly valuable. I believe this one is around 100 bucks now, though I only paid around $20 for it back in the day. Larger, uh, I believe these are closer to 40 millimeter. But this is the older generation of Lunars through the Perth Mint, Year of the Dog. You see how they just kind of drag the clip art and put them wherever they had space. I mean, it is good quality. We talk about that. But the design is just not strong. And here's the Year of the Pig in the same variety. Once again, just kind of drag and drop clip art around there. Uh, I mean, the, the pigs are high quality. We'll not deny that. But it just looks like it was minimal effort. However, like I said, highly valuable these. All right, outside of the Lunars, we go back to standard stuff. Once again, Years of Her Reign right there, 2023. This was a cool thing that came out last year. We have the Koi and the Dragon, which goes over the transition in the ancient, uh, it's not just Chinese, it's really a lot of Asian cultures, tradition where this Koi fish right here had to swim up a waterfall uh, and it took him a very long time, which eventually turned him into a dragon. There was a demon at the top. It was a whole thing. Uh, but basically, that's the story that this koi became so strong over time trying to swim up that waterfall that it eventually got to the top and transformed into a beautiful dragon. We have a beautiful bridge in the background, which is ceremonial. We talk about this in my video. And we have the pearl right here being breathed out of the dragon. So beautiful coin about... Um, or perseverance and kind of transformation of oneself through perseverance, but that is one that I really enjoy. Alrighty, up next. Here we go, another cool one that came out last year. This is crazy because when I first saw this online, I was like, man, that's pretty cool. It's architecture. It's something I don't have. It's a world icon structure. The more and more I hold this coin, the more I like it. It has become one of my favorites of all of my Australian coins, and that is saying quite a bit. So this is definitely one to look into. This is the Sydney Opera House. Uh, I want to say under 100,000, maybe it was 50,000 minted on this. I'd have to go back to my video to remember or check my spreadsheet, which I'm too lazy currently. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful coin. It is one of my favorites, uh, and it's one that I'm hoping that they do in a series where 
I know this was a 50th anniversary, but it would be really nice to highlight architecture uh, from Australia and or from around the world. I think that would be really cool. Uh, so that is just my two cents. This one I passed on for a couple of months and then I eventually got, and I'm glad I did because the online picture that I saw when purchasing it did not do it justice. It is gorgeous. Uh, this is the Australian Southern Sky, I believe is what it's called. As you see, we have the Southern Cross right here, a little privy of a platypus right there. This is one that they made for a few years. I don't know if they're going to bring it back or not, but I was not, uh, I was not expecting the popularity to be as strong as it is, and that's because in the States, it was like no one really cared about it. Uh, but then when I started to have... Australian viewers and understand the Australian market it was like they were flying off the shelf down there and I picked one up here uh, just in the nick of time because now I have one and a lot of people don't but it is absolutely gorgeous I know they did it for a couple of years and the little privy mark down here was changing each year uh, but I haven't seen one since so if you know if they're still making those put that in the comments below this next one is probably let me fix this Probably my favorite of any series that I have currently, even though I missed the first in it. And this is the one going over the different states of Australia. I mean, that's the obverse, by the way. Just gorgeous. We still have a royal designation right here, down here with the queen. Uh, but we missed the first in the series. This would be number two in the series. And just check that out. You get so many beautiful icons in focus and in balance that make the different states of Australia kind of show off their things. You know, this one has a Merino sheep right here, which is a huge part of their, uh, I guess, exports. It has native flowers and it has the kangaroo, it has the sun down here. It's just gorgeous. I mean, to me, this is the queen's beast of Australia. When it comes to series and it is fantastic i have no issue with these at all here was the third in the series as you can see if my camera will focus hello there we go all right so there we are we have the stag up here we have some beautiful beautiful decor in the background just fantastic so the last one was the New South Wales, and this one is the Queensland. Isn't that just gorgeous? So I'm hoping that uh, I can get my hands on the first one that I missed. I'm hoping that I can get my hands on all the rest of them that come out. But this may be my favorite series that I currently own. It is fantastic has a capped mintage on it. I don't remember what it was, but regardless, even if it was a million, I don't care. It is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, that's one you definitely want to look into. Next, we have two in this series. This is the newer one, as you see King Charles, if I can get to focus right here. This is kind of the icon series that everybody in Australia would want to collect. And that is a kookaburra. Changes every year. It's over 30 years old. It's established. It holds value like crazy. It is definitely one of the most popular of all time when it comes to World Series. Uh, I would say it's probably top five, if not higher than that. It could be top three. I don't know. But it's definitely one of the most iconic series of all time. This is the newest variety, the 2024 just beautiful so i have this one and i have the 30 year anniversary which was a couple years back 2020 where you get two kookaburras for the price of one there's one there on the front which i believe was the first design they ever did and they have the back and completely different design beautiful coin as you can see beautiful set of coins i should say gorgeous and then we also have this right here. Don't mind the little scratch of my capsule. This is the wedgie, the wedge-tailed eagle. 
another fantastic series where artwork changes every single year. So all the coins that I've showed you today, the artwork changes every year and they're glorious low mintage varieties. There's one I did not show you today and that's because it's not really a series. However, they are minted every single year and it's the calling card and that's the Australian kangaroo. Um, I completely forgot to pull it out, but basically that has a kangaroo on it and it really doesn't change from year to year. Though there were some years back in the day, it did have some subtle variations. It has not changed in some time. Kind of like the Britannia just moved to a new generation a few years back where they're much more defined than they used to be. Uh, and the American Silver Eagle even changed. Uh, after you know 28 years or whatever it was so that being said these are the series that I would really focus on if I were trying to collect their for the most part low mintage varieties the artwork changes basically every year uh, and they hold value and uh, definitely are fun to look at so that is what I have I hope you enjoyed I hope you let me know your favorites down in the comments below and with that being said, please remember to stay classy and current with the culture of currency.